let's go over binomial expansion. I'm going to show you a couple different ways of doing these things. I'm going to show you two different methods. In this video right here, we're going to learn about Pascal's triangle method. In another video, I'm going to show you using the binomial theorem. So first of all, it helps to just consider, you know, just what is a binomial? Bi means two, right? Bicycle has two wheels, biplane has two wings. Well, binomial has two terms. So this is a, a, a really good example of a binomial, x plus three. There's an x, there's the three. And we have an exponent. So when we do a binomial expansion, we're going to generalize it. We're going to say, well, okay, anything. So instead of saying x and 3, we can make them any numbers. So we'll make them a and b. They can be anything. It could have x's in it. It could have just numbers. It doesn't matter. And we have some exponent. We'll call it n. That's how we generalize it. Okay, so any old binomial expansion will be something like this. Now, a lot of people really struggle with these. They think these are really hard. They're really ugly. So that's why I'm going to take my time and take two videos and actually show you how to do this. That's why I thought maybe you need some encouragement. So positive possum. <laughs> so that's why I put that one there. So let's consider an example of something that's not so hard. I mean, uh, one thing, I'm just trying to start with something dumb and easy just to show you how we can get more and more complicated. So, I mean, it's really easy, right? I mean, what's the big deal? Isn't it just x squared plus 3 squared? No. It is not. This is not the case. Okay, it is not this. So I'm just gonna just show you first of all, it's not this. No, your teacher will get very upset at you if you do this. This is not the case. What is it really? Well, if we rewrite it as x plus 3 times x plus 3, you have it happening twice. See, that's what it means to be squared. And maybe you've learned some tricks. I know when I was in high school, although I'm Canadian, I went to high school in the US, um, in Colorado. I loved it there, by the way. Um, we learned this thing, our teacher called it FOIL. Just I found not anybody, not everybody else has heard of this, but we learned this little trick first, outside, inside, last. It's a good method to sort of expand these binomials like this. So first times first gives you x squared. Outside, so x times 3, so that gives you 3x. Inside, that means this times this, so 3 times x. And last, it's 3 times 3, which is 9. Now I can collect terms, right? So I can say that gives me x squared. And look, these two I can mix together. So that gives me uh, 6x plus 9. So what did we notice then? We noticed that, first of all, I mean, I hope you're thinking, why is he showing me this? I already know how to do this. If, if that's the case, good. I'm glad. Because we're going to use this, this idea. So do you notice, first of all, that when I had this exponent, you notice how many terms I have? This is a term here. Anything separated by pluses or minuses is a term, right? So I have this x squared, the 6x, and the 9. Do you notice I have three terms, but I only had two as the exponent? So here's a pro tip. This is going to be really important for you. The number of terms in the expansion is always the exponent plus 1. So that means if I did this thing to the power of 5, I would expect 6 terms, and so on. Now, this is fine and all for just something squared. Right? That's why you always, you've always probably already learned it that way a long time ago. You've learned how to do these. But what if we start taking these powers and making them crazy things? So this is a fine way to do it like this. But you know, what if I'm doing a power of like 5? I don't feel like doing this 5 times. So that's just why we're going to learn some methods. So what to do when the exponents get higher than just something like 2? Because that's pretty easy to do. When it starts getting higher, uh, then you have to start thinking of other ways. When you go like 5 or 6, like so I would say like to the power of 3, 4, 5, 6 or so, I'm fine to use Pascal's triangle method. Anything higher than that, I like to use this binomial theorem. And when we're done, I'm actually going to show you uh, even a hybrid method, so that the way I actually teach my own students uh, how to do it. So let's start off by just uh, you know understanding that there, there are two methods of doing this. Um, and like I said, it's... If we did it just like this right here, I just wanted to try to explain this, right? So if I did it like, you know, if I had like x plus 5 to the power of 7, that would be sad, right? I wouldn't want to do that. I wouldn't want to do it this way. So there's two methods. Let me show you the first method, uh, Pascal's triangle. We'll do that in this video here. So uh, let's start off with you just using a plus b, let's say, to the 3, just to try to do a cubic uh, exponent. So a plus b to the 3. Here's a trick I'm going to try to teach you. So first, write out Pascal's triangle for the power you need. Those will be your coefficients. Let me explain what I mean. Pascal's triangle is actually pretty neat. Um, it starts off like this. It goes 1, 1. It's got 1s all over the edges like this. And what you do here is this 1, 
1. What you do is you add up this. So 1 plus 1 gives you 2. Then you keep going. So there's a 1 here and a 1 here. 1 plus 2 is 3. 2 plus 1 is 3. And you would keep going. 1, you know, this thing goes forever, right? Three, 1 plus 3 is 4. 3 plus 3 is 6. 3 plus 1 is uh, 4. And this is just a 1. Do you notice, by the way, why I have Pascal's triangle? Look, it's actually Pascal's triangle. One, one, one. Look, there's two cats here. Here, there's, this is one, three, three, one. So actually that is actually represented by that. Isn't that cute? That's Pascal's triangle. Ha ha. <laughs> this is cute. Um, all right, so here's the trick, though. When we do this, do you notice this was an exponent of 3? That's why I want the one that has a 3. If this was to the power of 4, I would use this row. If I was to the power of 5, I would need another row. Do you get it? So if I had to the power of 12, I would need to do this stupid triangle all the way down. Whee! It would take a while, but it's not hard. All right, so that was first step. We got it. We got our coefficients. 1, 3, 3, 1. Now we have to write out each term. What do I mean by this? Well, I have to know how many terms I'm going to have. Do you remember how many terms I'm going to have in total? I'm going to have four terms because this is a power of three. Remember, it's always one more than you started with. So in this case then, because of that, I'm going to end up with, let's see, I'm going to have a, maybe I'll put all of my coefficients first. So I'll have one times something, you know, plus three. Actually, I'll put it like this. Hold on a second plus 3 times stuff. I'll leave some space here, okay? It's important that I have some space. Uh, plus 3 times something, plus 1 times something. So now, do you see I've done all my exponents? 1, 3, 3, 1. But I've also got to write my a's and b's, so let me show you what I mean by that. So I'm going to write down. I always write it like this. Okay, so I've got two terms. Remember, it's a binomial, so I've got to have two little uh, numbers here. So I'm going to put my a here and my b here, my a here and my b, my a and my b, my a and my b. So far so good, I've done this. So I've written, that's what I meant by coefficients, a's and b's. You notice I've got 1 a b plus 3 a b. Last thing I've got to do is make my exponents go up, my b ones go down. So what do I mean by that? Let me just attempt to, I don't know, what I'm going to do, hold on a second, I'm going to take this, I'm going to copy it, because I don't feel like writing it out again. I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to totally cheat and just paste. Let's see if this works. Kind of did, except for some reason it grabbed some other weird things. What the heck? All right, it's fine. I can delete those. Man. There we go. So, what do I do with this final step? I make my a exponents go down. What do I mean by that? Well, whatever happened to my a, so do you notice this is to the power of 3? So, I'm going to make this one here then go. I'll make them maybe in red here. This starts off as a 3, then it's a 2, then it's a 1, then it's a 0. That's what I meant by the a's go down. See? 3, 2, 1, 0. By the same way, the b's go up. So maybe I'll do them in green. So the b's go 0, 1, 2, 3. That's it. Now, you're not often going to be asked to do the entire expansion. They're usually going to be asking you to you know, find a certain term, like find the term that has, you know, I don't know, x equals 5, or say if there was some x's in here. Or find the constant term. Usually that's the case. That's a one that has no x's in it. So let me show you a, a particular example. Let's show, just do a specific one. So here's a question. Find the term with x squared in the expansion of x plus 3 to the power of 5. So. Let's start by doing this method here. So first step is to do Pascal's triangle. Maybe I'll do it in black here. So um, so Pascal's triangle, I'm going to have to go until I get to a 5 here. So let's see, 1, this is 2, 1, right? This is 1, 3, 3, 1. Remember, because 1 plus 2 is 3 and so on. 1 plus 3 is 4. 3 plus 3 is 6. 3 plus 1 is 4. 1, there. All right, I keep going. 1, 1 plus 4 is 5. 4 plus 6 is 10, 6 plus 4 is 10, 4 plus 1 is 5, and then it's a 1. Do you notice, by the way, this thing is symmetric, so you can save yourself some time. Once you know the first half, you know the other half. Depends if you have a middle term, if it's odd number or even number of terms. By the way, we stop here because we have the row we need. See, this is exponent of 5, so I need this row. These are my coefficients. Okay, So I'm going to start writing it out then. I'm going to say, all right then. I'm going to write out my coefficients. I'm going to say 1 times stuff you know, plus 
5 times stuff plus 10 times stuff plus 10 plus 5 plus 1. So I've got it all set up, except I've got to put in my A's and my B's. So I'm just going to go like this. I always leave a room for them. So do you notice I do this kind of, this is an algorithm to follow, right? I'm just following a method of doing this. All right. Now I put in my A's and my B's. So I got X and 3, X and 3, and so on. I know it's probably annoying for you to watch me do this. It's annoying to do. There we go. So x's and 3's. Then I make my exponents. Remember, my a exponents go down and my y, uh, b exponents go up. So I'll do that. Okay, so maybe I'll do it the same colors as before. Red ones. So this one here, since it started off as power 5, it goes 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. And my b terms go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Phew! Now I could actually sit there and calculate the whole thing, um, or what I can do is just search for the f one that I need. So I don't feel like figuring out what each of these is. Let's just look at the question now. So I've set it all up. Notice I've got six terms. One, two, three, four, five, six terms. That's good. Um, different things are going to happen depending on what a and b was. In this case, because it's just x plus 3, it's pretty easy to see which one has an x squared. Can you find it? Which term do I care about? I'm going to ignore all the other ones. Do you notice it's only this one I care about? Because that one has an x squared. Do you notice? And no other weird stuff is happening with x's. Sometimes it's more complicated. In this case, it's going to be really straightforward. It's just this. So I'm just going to focus on that one. So 10 times x squared times 3 cubed. What's 3 cubed, though? It's 3 times 3 times 3, which is 27. Hey, 27 times 10, I can put those together, so it's 270 x squared. And that is it. I'm done. So do you see, this one right here wasn't actually nearly so bad as you might think. The key is, start out your triangle, do it to the row where you need it. So this is the 5, it's the one that had a 5 in the second term, because they all have a 1 in the first term, right? You write out this algorithm, put on your, co your coefficients, put down your a's and your b's, string it all out like this, make sure your a's go down in powers, make sure your b's go up in powers, and then just focus on the one you need, and you're done. Now, when do we use these? You might think like these are so useless. Well, I mean, one thing is you use them in a math class, I guess. Um, there's a lot of computer programming that uses things related to this. I actually liked seeing it um, in terms of paths. I don't know if you've ever seen these in class, but uh, I like to show my students these, like how many different ways are there to get from A to B? This has to do with like you know city planning. If you're wondering like how many different paths can I take? Well, it turns out you can use Pascal's triangle just off on its side. If you sort of turn your head a little bit to your left a little bit, um, you notice and you so to go from A to B, you just do a Pascal's triangle here. Well, look, one. There's one way to go here, one way to go here. Well, then to get here, one plus one is two. So you notice we're doing a Pascal's triangle just on its side. Look, one, three, three, one. Now, of course, there was no 1 here, but 1, 4, 6, 4, 1, 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. It's just that they got cut because those weren't paths. Do so you notice then if I want to do the next one here, 10 plus 10, this here would be 20 here. Now I put a 20 here. All right, this here would be a 10 because there's only a 10 above it. This right here then would be 30. This right here would be, I just said I have to write smaller, right? So do you see how you could then figure out what this number is? So you essentially use Pascal's triangle, at least, for that. But I mean, binomial expansions, they're used in math and a lot of things. Uh, but I just thought it was a neat use. In the next video, what I'm going to do is show you uh, how to do a more complicated version, but it's a lot quicker, at least. So can you imagine if we had a higher power? What if, for example, I had like a, I don't know, let's say I had to the power of, uh, let's say I had x plus 3 to the power of 18. Would you feel like doing this? I would not want to do this method. This method would be, it would be fairly simple. It would just take a very long time. So there's a much better way to do it. That's why I'm going to show you in the next video how to do it with the binomial theorem.